The WBA Super World Championship on the line here on this stacked, packed, super supporting card to Joshua Parker and every bit as important a fight to these two. Northern Ireland's 25-year-old Ryan Burnett making the first defence of his crown against the Panama-based Venezuelan Yonfres Pareco. Burnett really improving of late and he's also been exciting as Carl. Yes, he looked very exciting. Not really putting a foot wrong. So we're just um, really excited to see where he goes now with his career. He's got this WBA super belt, and now he's stamped his authority on the world team. It's about keeping hold of that and looking as good in his previous fights now at this world level. Both have plenty of sparkling gold for the occasion on their attire. The black boots, though, of Ryan Burnett. As he aims for victory number 19. Sharp jabs, he's trained so hard and doggedly in Adam Booth's flourishing stable. But Jonfres Pareko has been sparring long and hard for this. Getting his opportunities in Panama. Winning of late, but at a much more different level. The speed, Burnett. I love the way he utilizes his feet to flashy jab and body work early. Yes, yeah, very flashy jab. Almost looks out of range, carries it by the hips, relying a lot up close on reflexes. He's young enough, he's got the speed and he's got that quick eye to hand movement. Eye to foot movement, good head movement, and it's a dangerous kind of style, but it's it's good to watch. He gets away with it. He's very confident. Stott's favourite here, of course, Burnett, but Pareko. Well, this is his 150th professional round, and he doesn't look phased at all by the occasion. Used to packing the suitcase and the training gear. But what has he got to hurt Burnett with? Ten knockouts in those 21 victories. Yeah, Pareko not a big puncher, so he's not gonna he's not going to be relying on landing a big punch. But early on, it's just gonna be about not getting hit and not getting drawn in to get caught with anything clean. So I think he's just having a look here at Ryan Burnett and trying to work something out, but he's in front of a very flashy, very tricky, awkward customer. Good judgment of distance from Burnett, fainting. And controlling combination at the end of that first. Adam Booth alongside his charge, Ryan Burnett already won success for the stable with uh, Josh Kelly's excellent win over Carlos Molina. Ten educational rounds from the flashy man from the northeast. How about the world champion from Northern Ireland, Ryan Burnett here, in with Yonfres Pareko defending his WBA title. And as you said, Carly had to uh, give up the IBF, the politics of this sport. Yes, yeah, sometimes your mandatory challengers, they're in a position for your belt and you have to either face them or give the belt up so they can carry on with their career. And um, that's what happened to Burnett. He won't be too worried about that. He's still got the WBA super title. But he needs to hang on to that. 
Got one that IBF against Lee Haskins. That was his breakthrough night, really. And then that in the WBA against Janet Zakianov in what was a very grueling fight over the 12 round distance. Both Haskins and Zakianov pushed him the full 12. Well, two tough fights and two very awkward customers, especially Lee Haskins. I mean, he's got an awkward, unorthodox style. And i just got a feeling that this is a chance now for Ryan Burnett to really show people what he's got and stamp his authority on the world scene with a classy win. So I'm expecting a bit of showboating, not too much, but a good quality performance. But Pareko starting to warm into this now. Yep, looking a bit livelier here, Pareko, who also went the distance with Janet Zakiainov, lost on a split decision in Monaco two and a half years ago. So that's good form. And he hasn't been beaten since. He said it was a robbery, as he would. Well, it does happen in boxing, but we don't like to hear that excuse. Southport Orthodox Burnett looking to switch it up, confuse Pareko. That wide stance he often uses as well. Yeah, he's got the wide stance, he likes to plant his feet and try to um, send in a big eye-catching shot. The problem with that wide stance and that low left, he can, he can get marked up and you can get caught with a jab. He got caught with a hook there and then the head followed in from Pareko and that sort of just, just whisked past the eye of, of Ryan Burnett. And that's the danger with that low guard. Sometimes you put your head in, in a dangerous place. Clap from Adam Booth in the corner. That cheeky little uppercut he tried there, Burnett. Trying to befuddle here, Pareko. And outbox him in and out of range. Extremely confident work from Ram Burnett, putting his head in range and walking off, nodding to Adam Booth, sat in his corner, as if to say, I'm in control, I'm, I'm comfortable, I know what I'm doing. Can't really get his jab going here, Pareko. That right hand was better. Magnificent Principality Stadium here in the heart of Cardiff beginning to really fill up now. There's been an incredible buzz around the streets all week. Over four and a half thousand at the way in. There was a great turnout at their workouts on Wednesday night. And everywhere you go around the place, they're talking about the big one. Yeah, there's a short walk from the hotel. I'm staying out over to the stadium. And um, it's not such a short walk now because... Well, the last couple of days has been really, really busy. Everybody excited about this big fight this evening. No holding, just trying to tidy it up a little bit here. Terry O'Connor. This needs to warm up this one. Burnett probably edging the first couple. Yonfrez Pareko not really got into a rhythm yet. But he can obviously look after himself. Just the edge in. Speed and class at the moment with Burnett, you feel? That's right, yeah. Burnett's, you know, he's doing enough to win. He's comfortable. He's, he's having it pretty much his own way, but not all his own way. I mean, he got hit there with a body shot, complained yeah. that it was low. It didn't look low to me. No, it was fine. It was a decent shot from Pareko. It just shows you Pareko's, you know, he's a, he's a very experienced operator, and he's not going to let Ryan Burnett just do what he wants and have it all his own way. And that's sparring with Laborio Solis, who he gave uh, Jamie McDonnell that really hard first encounter, and then the second was cut short because of the uh, eye damage. So that's um, excellent training in Panama. He looks in great nick, doesn't he, physically? Yeah, he does look in good nick. 
And I think once he finds his range and he's comfortable up close, he will then start start to go to work a little bit more. At the minute, he's finding it difficult because Ryan Burnett's so awkward and classy and sharp with that right hand. Yep, lovely right hand from Burnett. He's 31, Pareko. Which uh, isn't old, but certainly for a bantamweight, it's not young. And he's got the slight swelling under both eyes, marks from the battles he's had over the years. And that again, right hand from Burnett, just sharp. He's beating Pareko to the punch. He is, and he's also finding his range quite nicely. Switching to Sapor here will just confuse Pareko slightly and make him wonder what's coming back. Walked into a bit of a right hand there. Brian Burnett did as he stepped forward. Again, the wide stance from Burnett. Looking to spring on Pareko. And the right hand again, Josh Kelly telling us that he really spurs him on, Burnett. He's such a ferocious trainer. Pareko in with some body shots, but Burnett got one back and one to the head that just wobbled Pareko slightly. Might have been off balance, but does he have the power, Burnett? He's certainly digging in heavier-looking punches in the third here. Yes, it looks like he's got the power. Two nice body shots followed by a nice right hook to the head, which landed just around the back of the ear of Pareko, and it seemed to momentarily just wobble his feet, so... Maybe a bit of a sign of a breakthrough there. Adam Booth in his corner would have picked up on that. But I think he'll be just pulling the reins back and saying, look, still early on, just take your time and keep doing what you're doing. Don't linger inside. There's no need to be inside yeah, yeah. with him yet. You understand? Yeah. Don't be inside with him yet. Just keep sharp shooting and pop shot in with that mental pressure. Okay. Okay? Adam Booth, who obviously worked with David Hay, George Groves, Andy Lee, so many very good fighters. Likes the Ryan Burnett story. Second time. He's had Ryan tricky Ford. times, Burnett, but he seems settled now. And he's becoming really popular in Belfast as well. Building the crowds. And I know he'd rather fight there than anywhere. Here, in front of 78,000 Vegas. No, it's the city of Belfast. He's a homeboy. That's what they love him. That's right, but I'm sure he'll take this stage. Well, he wants to make a statement, I reckon, on this stage. And it's up to Jan Fres Pareko to uh, well, start driving Burnett back. He needs some success here, doesn't he? He does, yeah. I mean, we're into round four now, and it's, it's difficult to give Pareko. Well, you can't give Pareko anything. He's getting picked up. He's, he's walking into the odd right hand. He's very capable. He knows what he's doing. He's looking for the counter. He tries to count the left hook there as Burnett steps in. Burnett's not able to have it all his own way because of the experience of Pareko. He's looking for the, the sneaky counter punch. He's looking to fire back. Grabbing on close up here, not letting Burnett work. But Burnett does have to be careful, and he is being careful. He's, he's flicking the jab out, he's looking for, for the right hand, looking to set his feet, putting a bit of power onto the shots. He tries a right hand there, Pareko, who's been on the scene since 2009. One stoppage defeat to Hugo Ruiz in Mexico. Lost that in eight rounds six years ago. So there may be vulnerability for Burnett to exploit. We've never really seen Ryan in any great trouble, have we? We've not really seen him in any, any trouble at all. Obviously, he's, he's been on the end of a couple of shots, but he's not put a foot wrong as a professional. Mm. Did so well as an amateur as well. 94 wins in 98. Does that beat your record as an amateur? It certainly does. It's a fantastic amateur record and uh, almost as fantastic as that right hand that just clipped for Echo on the chin there and sending some... Um... Nice left as well from Burnett. 
Stepping in now, finding a bit of range and landing some good quality shots. Preco still looking for the counter. Still not looking in too much trouble, but just closing that gap nicely now. Ryan Burnett. Yep, inching forward, beginning to plant his feet as well when he delivers the rights. And Pareko very much on the back foot with limited success. Another round of applause from the blue corner and the Allen Booth team. It's all pretty comfortable, this, so far for Ryan Burnett, who ends the fourth looking very sharp and very confident. It's a fantastic time for sport, and we cannot wait for this. The Masters kicks off Thursday, of course, at Augusta. Sergio Garcia, reigning champion, who picked our very own Justin Rose almost cruelly. But it was a wonderful story for Garcia, wasn't it, last year? It really was a wonderful story. I mean, I love the sport, I love golf. And he really went out on top last year. It was a great finish. And expect more from the Green of Augusta in a few days' time. But a pretty big sporting tale still to unfold tonight, of course, with Anthony Joshua and Joseph Parker. This is one of the big chief supports, Ryan Burnett, in a world title defence in the eight stone six bantamweight division against Yonfres Pareco. Our visitor who lives in Panama now, Venezuelan by birth. And he's uh, fought on the circuit and around the world a great deal, but I'm not sure he's been with, with anyone like Ryan Burnett. He's certainly finding it difficult to fathom out the style of the Irishman. He is. He's having a big problem with, with Ryan Burnett's elusive, elusiveness. I mean, switching Sapo here, Burnett, with his arms dangling by his side. Switching and coming in from different angles. Pareko needs to get the jab going and start to establish that jab. He keeps throwing it and missing because of the head movement of Burnett. Pareko needs to jab the shoulder of Burnett just to get in range on the body. And when he gets in range, we see a bit of success. Yeah, better from Pareko with that body shot. Burnett says, come on then, I'll stay in the neutral corner. Try and unload on me because I'm going to counter you. That's what he wants. And that's the jab there from Pareko. If he can put the jab down to the body and onto the shoulder, he'll get in range and he will have success. What we saw on that turn of the turf, the uh, advantage in height and reach that Pareko had on paper, just hasn't utilised that jab, beginning to. That's what he needs to do. Yep, jab the shoulder. Slightly low there on the blind side of the referee. No, I didn't see that. The net. Looking at the referee, but... I don't like to see this at this stage in, a, in such a talented young fighter's career when they're, you know, they're almost cocky and nonchalant in their mannerisms and they're backing themselves up to corner, inviting the opponent in, only to be hit, because that's all that did, that got him hit. Shows how relaxed he is with the arms down. It's almost like he's been picking a bit up off Josh Kelly, his stable mate. And they have got two very different styles. Lightning fast, though, Burnett. Yes, he does get away with a lot because of his speed, and he's, he's got quick reflexes, and he punches from some, some awkward angles as well. He gets caught, though. Shots do get through. That's what makes him exciting. Thoroughly enjoyed the Belfast trips recently. Better round for Pareko. Did he do enough maybe to get a share? The reflexes of Ryan Burnett. Excellent for the most. 
Who did you give that one to? I nearly scored the round even, but, you know, Brian Burnett was landing nicely with the, the bigger, more eye-catching shots. It was definitely closing the gap there for Pareko. He was getting close to Burnett and having more success, but... Now, Burnett really, on the cards, in my opinion, having it all his, all his own way. Not easy for him, though, don't be deceived. He's having to work, he's having to respond. And he's having to get them shots in while he sits in range. He's marking up around the face, just some reddening around that left side of his face and his eye, and that left shoulder where Pareko's up, up to, to jab lower. And that does happen to Burnett, doesn't it? So what advice would you be giving Team Pareko here? Well, like I said, with that jab, Pareko needs to, needs to try and get in range with that jab. But when he gets in range, almost instantly Ryan Burnett does what he should do and he responds, he fires, he's, he's first to act. Pareko needs to get in range, and he needs to punch first. It's a buzzing bantamweight division. Burnett, the super holder, the regular. Of course, Jamie McDonnell, who's off to Tokyo at the end of May to take on the uh, huge puncher, Nail Inoue. That's live on Sky Sports. It's a Friday morning, May the 25th. And Burnett... Gives McDonald a real chance in that, and if they can both come through, well, what a domestic dust up that'll be, Carl. Yeah, that would be one to watch. Very exciting. But that's still got a job to do here. He's doing it well. But Pareko, you can see by his body language, and you know he's still trying to land that jab. All close, he's trying to get off. But Burnett just, he's just tricky and awkward and physically stronger than Pareko, which is making it such hard work for Pareko to get any kind of success or make any kind of thing with these judges. He stopped two of his last four, Pareko, in Colombia, but that uppercut from Burnett was uh, beautiful. Picks his shots nicely. He just hasn't had any sustained success here, the Venezuelan. He just needs a round or two to, to, to get in the bank, doesn't he? Just a bit too slick and clever, Burnett. Yes, and when Burnett gets caught with the shot, Preco has any success. Ryan Burnett's just quick to respond and, and answer back and finish the argument on top. Fainting, then comes forward with the combination, Burnett. The skills he's honed over the years. the Belfast Cronk, the Holy Family as well. Trend under Jerry Story for a while. Top quality. Good fight for Ben at this, because, you know, he's defending his WBA Super World title, and he's not having it all his own way. He's not able to just punch and land at will, and there's always something coming back to think about. Yeah, good defence from Pareko, but that's a lovely uppercut. He's tried it a few times, and that rocked the head back of Jan Frez Pareko. That was a quality shot there from Ryan, but it was a left uppercut, just relaxed, just found the angle, found the gap, and slipped that left uppercut in and snapped, snapped the head of Pareko back. Good yeah, work from Burnett. The eye-catching punch of the fight so far from Ryan Burnett. Meanwhile, backstage, the big boys are getting ready. Anthony Joshua, and this is being beamed on the large screens around the Principality. He was so relaxed when he arrived, but then Joseph Parker was this morning when we saw him. Coming in here about half past ten, doing his ring walk rehearsals. He hung about, he chatted with everybody. It's amazing, you fighters, how you can do that on the day. You know what? Something I never did. I did, I did not like to, and I wasn't very superstitious, but I didn't like to go in the ring. I certainly didn't get in and stand in the ring and have a walk about. But a lot of fighters do, and they they like to feel the canvas and have a look at. You know, it's almost a ritual for some of them. A bit of superstition. A lot of boxers and athletes are superstitious. But I didn't like to see the ring and get in that ring until it was time to go to work. Surely the nerves are kicking in, certainly the adrenaline pumping. Second half of this world 
Bantamweight Championship. Ryan Burnett, remember defending his title, and on Carl's card, he's won every round. Maybe a little unfair about the fifth. I thought Pareko had his uh, moments. Yeah, there's a couple of rounds here, probably the fifth, that he could have shared, but you just can't give anything to Pareko, in my opinion, because he's not having any kind of sustained success. And when he does have success, Ryan Burnett does the right thing and answers back. So, you know, this is, this is a good fight. For Ryan Burnett, this is a learning fight. He's not having it all his own way. He's able to showcase his skills and his talent. But it's not, by no stretch of anybody's imagination, watching this easy. This is not an easy fight for him. But on the same note, he's enjoying himself. But it was never going to be easy, was it, when uh, this Pareko's been around the world and he's also taken Zaki Ainov the full distance. So Burnett. I'm sure he's felt this would be tough, but showcasing his skills. Nice jab. Adam Booth will be pretty happy, won't he? Yes, Adam Booth will be very happy with the performance of Ryan Burnett. Putting on a bit of a show here in this round. Just keeping out of range and trying to trying to goad in Pareko to make a mistake. And he's not taking the bait. Pareko's last four have been at super bantamweight, so he's had to grind himself down. As we said earlier, physically he looks uh, in excellent shape. I wonder if that weight might start to become a problem down the stretch. He's got to take a few risks here, hasn't he, Pareko? Just not quite cute enough to deal with Burnett. Yes, look close now, Pareto. He seems he seems unmotivated and a little bit dejected. I think he realizes the difficulty of the task in front of him and he's, he's not having much success. And when he does close that gap, there's punches hitting him, body and head. We talked about the sparring with Solis, but it must be a nightmare trying to find someone to replicate Ryan Burnett. Yeah, it's difficult to get sparring to, to replicate and match almost any opponent because Everybody does different things. Good work there for Bennett, stepping in with the right hand, and then a cheeky left, straight sort of hook come jab. Yep, just lost his balance again. Pareko, it's happened a couple of times. Good stiff jabs as well from Burnett. When he puts his punches together, he looks really good, but there is a cut for Ryan Burnett. It's happened before, it will happen again. He has fragile skin. Johnson uh, has applied the Vaseline to the cut just by the eyebrow. Possibly one that's reopened. Didn't he uh, suffer that sort of damage against Lee Haskins? I think he may have done certainly in the same area. I mean, it may or may not be the same cut, but it's a cut above the eye that he doesn't need, really. I mean, blood leaking into that left eye is lead, leading with the left hand. Will this let him get down to work more? With, then it'd be a bit more cagey. Adam Booth in the corner there just saying, take the time, don't take any risks. But his style and the way he moves in and out of range of that low guard does put himself in the danger zone for clashing heads, which has happened a couple of times. There's been a couple of near misses. But that's how he fights, that's why he's exciting. Flicking out the jab, Burnett. And the right hand performing on this big stage in front of the likes of... One of the greatest fighters of all time, Sugar Ray Leonard, who's here tonight. Also seen Frank Bruno. Sugar Ray Leonard looks and sounds fresher and fresher every single time I see him. He really is a fine example to a retired athlete in any sport, but a retired boxer to be in the condition he's in, and he's so articulate. Always enjoy a chat with Sugar Ray Leonard. Yeah, he's fantastic, isn't he? Legend, true legend of the sport. 
And very exciting for a young 25-year-old like Burnett to be able to showcase his talent in front of him. Yes, he was sat ringside. He actually came to have a chat with me before the Lucian Butte fight in Nottingham when I came back after after my defeat to Andre Ward and seeing Sugar Ray Leonard and speaking to him and then knowing that he sat at, sat at ringside for a young fighter. I mean, if that doesn't spur you on, nothing will. Was Leonard one of your heroes? Of course. Was he not everybody's hero? I like Tommy Hearns. Well, you know, <laughs> all of them fighters, Hearns, Hagler, Duran, Leonard. Great, wasn't it? Just an unbelievable era. The Four Kings. And they all had each other, dance partners. Blood reopening on the cut of Ryan Burnett, who uh, possibly has that damage from a head clash. But he could um, find good opponents in this bantamweight division. You know, the likes of McDonnell and Minoue, there's much to go out in the next couple of years for Ryan Burnett. Politics aside, he just has to beat what's in front of him, and he's done it ever so successfully 18 times already since he turned pro in May 2013. Just start to time the jab of Burnett now. Pareko just, just waiting for that lead jab, who sometimes falls short, and Pareko's able to get the right hand in, but he's just overwhelmed by the work rate and being pushed on his back foot by Ryan Burnett. He's winning everything, but just gets caught with the up. Clumsy shot. Turning southpaw again, Pareko not able to throw a lot, tries a right hand. It's limited success from Pareko. We mentioned the champions that are here. Here's a former two-weight champion who we know well, Paulie Mananaji in the house with Andy. Yeah, thanks, Adam. The magic man is here. Paulie, yeah. Uh... You're here working for our colleagues at Showtime tonight. What have you made of Ryan Burnett's performance so far? He's a little bit like yourself, a bit of a purist. <laughs> yeah, he is. He's, he's got some razzmatazz and some moves. He's got a game guy in front of him, though. Pareko's trying. It's not for lack of trying, but a guy like Pareko can make Burnett look good. Burnett clearly has the better, better pedigree, and he's showing it, switching stances in that last round, uh, some good counter-punching skills, some sharp shooting. Uh, I like the way he's looking, and he's got a game guy in front of him, so it'll make him use all the tools. Very quickly on the uh, main event, how do you see it going tonight? Oh, uh, you know, I think it's a great fight. Uh, two undefeated uh, fighters are uh, battling for the unified, uh, unified portion of the heavyweight championship. Uh, I, I favor Joshua, but I really think if, if Parker can last into the middle to late rounds, he's going to start to show some of his quality as well. Thanks, Paulie. Second Always fight. great to hear from right Paulie. We had dinner the other night, and we were to and fro about Joshua and Wilder, but as he says, Joshua Parker first, and he thinks Parker can take Joshua late, and if he can, what will happen then? Always good to have Paulie on side. He'll be back with us for the Hey Bellew week. We share it with Showtime, don't we? They get first dibs, Carl. Yeah, we don't mind sharing him. He can be known to take over Paulie. He was quick then. He was asked to be quick, and he was quick. But now he's, um, he's a wealth of knowledge for us here at ringside. Yep, brilliant analyst. And uh, he obviously is impressed with Ryan Burnett's work so far. But as he said, young press Pareko game. Is it up to Burnett now to to up the gears and you know send out a statement, or is he just going to guide his way home to a 12-round decision? Well, I think if he could up the gears and send out a statement and get get the job done inside the distance, I think he would because he's that type of fighter. The fact that Pareko is still in there and still looking to land the counter and not leaving too many obvious openings for Burnett. And he's still tricky with that jab. He's very tough and strong as well and very experienced. Let's not forget, he's only been beaten twice. And one of them he disputed. So it's a good opposition for Echo this for Burnett. Um, you know, if Burnett is to really try and establish himself, he needs to step in with a, with a combination and then go again. So once he's landed them punches, get off to the side, then go again. And he's probably not going to wipe out Pareko with one punch, so he needs to land the sustained attacks, a second phase attack, in order for the referee to think, right, I need to get involved here. But Pareko, I think, is too cute for that. Yep, still looking strong, Pareko. Good defence at times, too. Keeping those elbows tucked in. And he started to attack the body in those first couple of rounds, but it hasn't really had a great deal of success since in that department. 
springs in with those cat like reflexes. Burnett. A <laughs> right smile for the first time from Pareko. <laughs> He's trying so hard, isn't he, Pareko, to find something. Yes, he's definitely trying. He, he's definitely up for the job, but it's such a difficult task for him. Ramonet just tricky and awkward, and he's fast. He's, he's young, he's got them reflexes. He's full of energy. And Pareko just he just hasn't got the he hasn't got the talent and the skill. I mean, he's got the experience and he's tough and strong. He's staying in there well, but it's not really a competitive match because Burnett is just too sharp and too young. Yep, stubborn and gritty, but Burnett takes another round. Meanwhile, Leanne backstage with Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm joined by the legend Sugar Ray Leonard. Just how excited are you for the main event? Uh, extremely excited. Um, I've watched uh, Anthony uh, on the tube and uh, had an opportunity to watch him in person and uh, I, I like what he represents. He is the entire package. Uh, he's a great champion and uh, he's good for the sport. You've just been in his dressing room there, how was it? Well, calm uh, and collective, as I expected, but uh, he's a champ, and that's what it's all about, you know, being patient and, and being uh, respectful. Wow, maybe she'll pinch herself in the morning, Leanne. Up close and interviewing Sugar Ray Leonard. I'm very jealous, aren't you? I certainly am. The man, as you said, he is a legend. Right here. And we always value his opinion. Always very, very knowledgeable, Ray Leonard. And it is an absolute pleasure to have him here in Wales. Nine minutes to go. Of, uh, well, I think on the scorecards, it will look a pretty comfortable defence, this, for Ryan Burnett. But, you know, young Fres Pareko has always been there in front of him. He's tried very hard, shown resistance. That's a bit of Vaseline on the cut, which hasn't got any worse. It's just a bit lukewarm, isn't it, at times, this? Yes, I mean, Bennett now is in a position where he, in his mind, I mean, he'll take the advice of Adam Booth, but he either just coasts home, doesn't get hit, doesn't take any chances, he's got a foot above the ice, so just stay safe. He's won the final points, this goes the distance take no risks or does he step in and really try and go for that grandstand finish is it taking no risk Pareko obviously has to try now he's got nothing to lose he's almost certainly got to stop Burnett or put the pressure on really late but you know for Burnett this is an opportunity a big stage you know quarter past nine on a, on a Saturday night Sky Sports box office underneath the Joshua Parker bill now people are watching there's expectations, last couple have gone the distance. Is it just about the win? Well, it would be harsh to be critical and try and find flaws and pick holes in his performance, but, you know, you're right, this stage is massive, this opportunity he's got, and if he can press home a finish here, put together a combination and then go again with another combination and really apply some pressure, then, you know, he just may force a stoppage and look a million dollars. But we know with Adam, he wants it to be perfect, doesn't he? And we saw that with David Hay, and he went and fought Nikolai Valoev, and remember the blue and the red T-shirts, the blue for calm composure, the red for ferocity, and I think that this one is a case of the championship distance is fine. Get the win, defend this title, because you lost the other one to politics, and then look for, I don't know, another big fight in Belfast, see what happens to McDonald in Tokyo. But this is an opportunity. Yes, I think exactly that. You've got the job done to this stage now. Just don't do anything silly. And press home the finish without taking any, any chances. It's actually a cube of ice on the ring apron that Andy Scott's just pointed out to me on the far side. Not sure where it's come from. But it's, been, actually, it's, it's been pretty cold in here all day. It has, yeah. Well, that was in the centre of the ring earlier. It fell off um, Ryan Burnett's shorts as he came up for the last round. It was in the middle of the room. I'm not sure. Did the referee kick it off to the side? But, yeah, a cube of ice in the middle of the ring is not, not ideal if you step on that. We've seen it all, haven't we, over the years? Yeah, we've seen, especially in outdoor events. I mean, you see, you see insects flying and 
getting in the way. I mean, what a distraction that is. Tyson Fury had to get rid of uh, Wasps at ringside when he uh, beat Vladimir Klitschko as well backstage. Fraser is with David Price. David, as opportunities go, they don't come much bigger than this. Biggest opportunity in my life about to happen now, Fraser, so the time is now. And the only pressure you'll feel will be that which you put on yourself. Yeah, you know, I'm desperate to win, like I've said, but um, I'm calm, I'm relaxed and all prepared. I'm just confident that in an hour's time we're going to be in this dressing room celebrating. And this could really catapult you into the stratosphere as far as the heavyweight boxing scene is concerned. It will do. It's going to put me right amongst the big fights, which is the reason why I'm in the sport. So, you know, that, that's the uh, entire motivation behind taking the fight. But you're in a, in a tough fight with Alexander Povetkin, a very experienced fighter. He's good, he's tough, Corners, you know, I'm, I'm up against it on, on paper, but I've just got a belief that it's going to be my night. Thanks, David. Thanks, mate. The big smile from David Price. What a story, what an opportunity for him. And he was saying in the trade paper boxing news this week, he doesn't do anything as good as Alexander Povetkin. He's honest. He's got no real pressure on his shoulders. He's just got to go out and try and knock him out because he's got power. He has got power, yes. And Tony Belli, earlier, I was talking to him, I think, I think he mentioned that on air, that he's seen David Price, he knows what he can do. And he, he respects and rates how good David Price is, but the problem... I've got with that, it's in the gym. He sees all that in the gym and, you know, there's many a gym fighters over the years that I've seen come and go, but they cannot perform on the big stage. We need to see a performance from David Price tonight. And against Povetkin, he's got the opportunity of a lifetime here. So I really hope he can hold it together, believe in himself and give us a show. Ryan Bernard outclassing Jan Fres Pareko here. Pareko has never stopped trying, very game. Hard man. Living now with his family in Panama, taking this opportunity a long way from home. Got Burnett, a move ahead. More variety, more punches thrown, more clever moves. Just better. Yes, he's trying for Echo. He's, you know, he's throwing punches. When he's in range, he's trying to establish the well, he's been trying to establish the jab and not really had the success he needed. And he's not stepped in with it and put any combinations together because Ryan Burnett is just too fast and short with combinations like that, awkward uppercuts from out of range and putting Pareko on his back foot. It's just so difficult for Pareko to get anything going. That was a lovely swift combination, but again he goes back and he doesn't really put the pressure on Burnett, does he? He could maybe. Get Pareko out of there if he did. Well, he does. He steps back and admires the work, and it, it is good work. But if you want to see the finish, you want to be impressed, he needs to step in and go again. And then again, you know, you have to land a lot of unanswered punches to force a stoppage. But, you know, Pareko's not really been in any trouble or shown any real danger to give him that sign where he thinks, you know what, I'm going to go for it now. Yeah, he boxed really well against Jason Booth, the veteran in Nottingham a couple of years ago. Got him down and we thought he might take him out, but he chose to go the distance on that occasion. Anthony Satu as well, he went 10 rounds with. It's almost like he just follows it round by round, what Adam says. Listen, it's a winning formula. He's going to be 19-0, barring any last few minute disasters here. Burnett, polished, efficient, just not spectacular. Well, that's right, polished and efficient, he gets the job that is the winner, but... You know yourself, unfortunately, in this sport, it's the entertainment business, and if you can just put the icing on the cake, get that cherry on top, and give us a good entertaining finish in these kind of fights. Let's get straight back to Fraser, who's with Joseph Parker. Joseph, the moment is almost upon us. How are you feeling? Feeling good. Feeling great, actually. Um, just getting the hands wrapped. Our team is relaxed, we're calm. Jamming some music, and uh, just chilling out. How confident are you that you've done everything 100% in this training camp as much as you possibly can? I'm 100% confident in, in what I can do in the ring. That's why we wanted to make the fight happen. That's why we're here. I'm looking forward to, like I said, put on a great performance and I'm ready to take those belts back. And it's, you feel it's your destiny to take those belts back to New Zealand? I feel it's my destiny. I feel it's my time. I feel it's uh, the time for us to um, make our mark on the world and the heavyweight division. Thanks, Joe. Thank you.
as professional as ever, Joseph Parker. He's been a pleasure to work with over the last couple of months in his training camp in Vegas with Kevin Barry. And he's been pretty cool and calm in the last couple of weeks as well. His promoter, David Higgins, told Eddie Hearn today he had nine hours sleep last night. He slept like a baby. He's absolutely right, Parker, and he needs to be. He is, yes, and he does need to be. It's almost an obvious answer when you ask a fighter before they're about to step into the biggest fight of their life, how are you feeling? The obvious answer is, I'm feeling great and I'm OK, but I tend to believe Joseph Parker because he's been like that every time I've met him, and all week here he's, he seemed to lose confidence and belief. Well, it's a shutout on your card, Carl. Yes, I could have given one of the rounds a share earlier on, but I didn't because Burnett simply won the round. It was it was a closer round for, for Echo, but he didn't do enough. So, totally one-sided on the cards, in my opinion, for Ryan Burnett, because he's winning the rounds. He's landing more shots, he's looking good, he's classy. We want to see the finish, but we're, we're eager boxing fans, as well as analysts and commentators. We want to see a grandstand finish, well, I always do anyway, and I'm sure the viewers at home do, but this is a really, really good performance. It's hard to pick any flaws in the performance here of Ryan Burnett. Excellent judge of distance and of range here, Burnett, with flashy skills and always a move in front of the tough. But maybe at this level, limited Jan Fres Pareko. And he's not thrown caution to the wind either, Pareko. He hasn't really gone for it, as though he knows he's not going to get that success tonight. Yeah, I think he realises now, and um, it's a matter of self-preservation here in the last round. I'm impressed with the way Ryan Burnett's still able to throw big shots and move forward. He's still light on his feet. He doesn't look to a fader at all. This really has been just a you know, business-like performance for him. He's been comfortable throughout the night. Getting hit there with a right hand as he leaves that left arm low and ducks down. That will always be a, a bit of a, a flaw in his style, but I'm not going to criticise him for having a low left because um, that will be a bit of an insult coming from me. This will be the eighth time in a row that Ryan Burnett has gone the distance. So obviously not the biggest puncher at this sort of level, but in terms of skills and class, he has it. And he will be a hard night's work for any of the other champions. Most definitely. Is he the best in the world at the moment at Bantamweight? Well, we know he's WBA Super World Champion. One of the best belts in the business, and he looks good, and he's proving that, that he belongs here. Zelani Tete, WBO, Jamie McDonnell, of course, and Noah Inoue. You can't forget him. It's a buzzing division, and this has been a pretty effective display of box fighting from Ryan Burnett. Intelligent, quick, snappy, totally outclassed, and out. Thought Jan Frez Pareko from start to finish. Pareko puts his glove up. It was self preservation. He made it through the 12 rounds, but I don't think he's going to get a lot of love from the scorecards. No, I agree with that. I can't see him winning much at all on the scorecards. Good finish from Ryan Burnett. He had a go. He, you know, he was landing more shots, still landing accurate shots from angles, still looking full of energy. Impressive work there. Adam Booth stepping in, smiling, nodding at his man. Job well done. Not as exciting, though, as the last couple of times we've seen him, but that unofficial card, 120, 108, really, that is what matters. It is a business, and he is about to be 19-0 and, and still a world champion. And that's what matters. He's still got that belt because this business can be cruel at times for the wrong reasons. Things can go horribly wrong for you. Especially, and I don't want to throw any jinx in, but especially in the heavyweight division, we've seen it time and time again, it takes one punch to change things. I'm just so excited about this big one, Adam. Me too, can't wait. Howard Foster, of course, from the United Kingdom, who Carl knows so well, one of the judges. Pavel Cardini, just in front of us from Poland. Nelson Vasquez from Puerto Rico. They're going to be pretty similar, aren't they? 
Yes, I think so. A couple of rounds, maybe close, maybe even. I don't think the scorecards really matter now. Is that a beer skin that just walked into the ring? Yeah. Just didn't have the drama, that one. But Burnett boxes his way home. Let's find out officially. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to our judges' score totals. Both judges, Howard Foster and Nelson Vasquez, see this contest 120-108. Pavel Cardini, 116-112. The winner and still WBA Super World Bantamweight Champion, Ryan Burnett. Well, two scorecards, just like Carl's, can't really explain the other one at all. But he gets it unanimously, Ryan Bernard. He was just holding his right hand there. They pulled the glove off and there was some pain. So maybe an issue there. But he is still 